My guests today are Laurel and Jose Mojica. How are you guys doing? Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing well. It's great to see you all. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. Dave and I go way back. We, we used to work together. We used to commute together. We used to commute together. You In fact, are, we were, remember right. when we recorded the podcast during our commute, a lot live streaming <laughs> That's podcast? That's right. We've always been into technology and trying to do this type of show, right? But we've uh, always been into technology. But you've been more into media. You were when I first met you. You were not only a, a, a software guy, but you were you were making movies in your yeah. spare time, and you've continued that, and it's it's evolved, right? It's evolved. Uh, tell, me about, and, tell me about the evolution. Yep. Yeah, so uh, you know, Eric, if you go way back, you know, both Laurel and I have always wanted to tell stories. You know, we've always been wanting to. You know, we we love uh, brainstorming and creating stories. And now Laurel's focused more on books, on novels. I started with novels too, but uh, I realized very quickly that I hated being alone when I was writing stuff down. Mm. You know, uh, Laurel would say, "Hey, it's time to go write," and uh, <laughs> I would, I would feel it was a punishment, you know, going to a little room by myself. So quickly, I realized, and, and the other thing that I didn't like was that you'd spend a year. Uh, writing a novel and then all of a sudden you know and then the person would like take two or three days and, and be done reading it you know and I thought that, that that's kind of <laughs> depressing um, so I uh, I started uh, realizing that I liked movies and collaboration more so so now we spend a year and it takes two hours. <laughs> yes. So now it takes two uh, but people are more likely to rewatch a movie that they like than yeah. they are to reread a novel. That they to like. reread a novel. You are correct. Um, so, uh, so we transitioned into movies and we were doing live uh, movies, but then something happened. We, uh, my brother sent me a VR headset um, and, uh, and we got into VR and both Laurel and I, we were like, okay, this is amazing. We have to do something with this. Uh, in our last movie, we had really been liking the longer shots to make it feel more like you're sort of spying on someone's real life. And we realized with the, you know, 3D VR, you really can put the viewer right inside the movie. Right. Uh, yeah. If you watch uh, our feature, The Life Peddler, you'll notice that we try to do it in such a way that every scene is one take. Uh, so uh, and, and we did that because we like the feel of, you know, kind of like a documentary style, like you're actually watching real people, uh, you know, their, their life. And so that was an e you know, it made it easier for us to realize, yeah, you know, what we really like is this immersion thing. Um, but then we realized that if you do that with live action, the viewer is stuck in one place because you can't really move the camera very well without getting people sick. And so that's when we switched over to animation. Right. Uh, we, we bought these cameras um, that were 360 3D live cameras to record oh, for wow. VR. Mm -hmm. to record uh, live action. And it that was kind of neat. Uh, you put on the headset and you watch the movie, but pretty soon you realize that you want to be able to move yourself around the world and explore. So, uh, so then there's no way to do that except to create the world in a computer uh, that will allow the user to navigate through it in that you know, and then there's no way to do the characters unless they're also digital characters. And, and so that led us to the path of animation in order to tell our, our VR stories. So that's what you're doing now. Now you're building um, almost like a computer game as opposed to a, a movie. Almost like a game, right. Like a, yeah, like a except... role playing game. <laughs> sort of, except that you aren't one of the characters. You're still the viewer and... Oh. So, but you can walk around and see, oh, where did this character come from? Or, hey, you know, what what was the motivation here? Or where are they going next? You can follow different people and see different pieces of the story. Oh, interesting. 
So you as a storyteller have less control of how it's being viewed. Is that, yes. is that, is that yes. frustrating? Or is that no, it's in, awesome. enabling? It's actually, you know, the difficult part, and uh, this goes to the, the way we uh, started doing things, which we can talk about later, uh, is that uh, imagine you're watching Harry Potter, for example, um, but the viewer can just you know, decide they don't want to follow Harry anymore. They want to, they're more interested on another side story. You know, maybe they heard a conversation between two people in Slytherin or something, right. you know. They want to figure out where the frog went. Where and they the want to follow them. Uh, then all of a sudden, oh, our little camera is uh, <laughs> switching. <laughs> is, oh, is it following your voice? Is that what happened? I yeah. think what happened <laughs> there is that, yeah. <laughs> Yep. There you go. Just, just lean that way. There we let go. Let me just, uh, just lean, lean over here. There we go. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, uh, it, it's harder to tell stories because of the fact that we have in our VR movies four or five storylines happening at the same time, letting the viewer uh, follow the action. Uh, so, w whichever way they want. Yeah, actually, it makes it kind of fun because, um, for instance, uh, in the demo that we've been building, there's about 10 characters. And so you keep the story short. It's about four minutes. But each of those 10 characters has a full little story in that four minutes. Wow. And so we're going to have short episodes that are very rewatchable. So you're filming multiple storylines simultaneously, which is which is a challenge. It, it is, especially because we are do, performing all the characters. Uh, so, uh, so how do we, you know, how do we do that? Uh, and we had to basically figure out a new way of, of filming things because, yeah, everything has to be synced up. So if, if a character walks up to another one, uh, you know, and then there is uh, the timing just has to be perfect between all. Oh, yeah. Everything and that's you, happening. You might be like uh, Jose. You might be voicing both characters. Yes. And I might are be you, voicing both. Are you characters. going to do it in real time and switch, uh, or are you going to record one character's voice and then go back one later and record time. the other? One Which at a time. So, so what have no we prompts, figured so out. Kind of uh, guess. Go ahead. You have no prompts as to you're responding to a question that you're not hearing. <laughs> well, so yeah. the the way we came up with it, uh, we realized pretty quickly that that was a problem <laughs> that that was a problem because you can't do cuts because it's uh you know in people can see your whole body you can't cut without things kind of jumping mm -hmm. so yeah we wanted our vr movie to be uh you know one long take basically yeah uh, like that opening scene from touch of evil it's a classic yeah. this movie? <laughs> right orson wells and Charlton has I, I haven't seen it. Sorry. Oh, watch it. It's, it's, uh, the opening scene is like 15 minutes long of a scene. Oh, it is? Oh, okay. It's, as a filmmaker, yeah, you really <laughs> impressed. Yeah. <laughs> so what we realized is that uh, we came up with this system, uh, and it took us a while. It took us maybe a year to figure out how to do this. Uh, but what we, uh, what we do is we uh, create what we call a reference video, where we ourselves film all the parts uh, together. Uh, so in this one, we are just switching our voices mm. back and forth for each different part and reading all the lines. Right. And then we edit this video first that we call the reference video so that every part is in sync. And we have one movie that we use and then we add uh, captioning and everything to each part uh, that we have to voice. And we sit, and then we start actually recording the performance of uh, by watching ourselves in the reference video. So then we mm -hmm. do have prompts. Oh, I see. We can because you can listen voice. to your voice that you recorded last exactly. month. We listen to ourselves uh, doing each part and Got reacting it. because we also have to react to ourselves. So, so we record everything, you know, each but part individual. But because of this, the mm -hmm. other thing we figured out is that we have to do the body separate from the face and voice because we need to be able to see the camera to know when the prompts are for the face and voice. Mm -hmm. And that 
you know, limits our ability to do the physical acting. Right. That was another thing. A lot of people who perform in VR, and I, I guess we should back up and, and talk about how we record ourselves. I'd love in, to hear about uh, some of the tools you're using, some of the technology. Right. It's, it's in the title of the show, technology. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, so, uh, yeah, let me, uh, I brought some props, actually. Um, so this uh, is our motion capture suit, one of them that we use. We have another one hanging actually back there. Okay. Uh, this has uh, holders for uh, for motion sensors. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, you've got that. So you, yeah. um, so you are physically moving around, and then the computer is going to replace your body movements with a generated body. Actually, what happens is that we have a character that we created, and uh, one is in, um, we use a tool called iClone uh, and Character Creator. We have uh, a person who created our characters to our specs. You know, we said we want a bacon-wrapped avocado uh, that's kind of like a mummy. Uh, we have, uh, we have characters that look at, like us. Uh, we, we have, have an actual mummy. We have a drone that has a zombie brain on top. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of, you know, we have, uh, I think about a, uh, oh, we have two hearts that, that talk and have glasses and the hand. Uh, oh, and then we have the hand as the well. The hand of so, That's right. Exactly. And we have all these characters that were created in character creator and they have full skeletons and all that stuff. And then the motion capture suit connects our bones essentially to those bones. And so as we move, they move, hmm. you know, so we see them move live and then it records their movements and that's our animation there. Okay. So is this the bacon wrapped avocado on your shirt here? That's the character? Yes. Yes. So this is right. our character. But it, it has uh, really short legs and really long arms and a huge body, whereas yes. you don't. How does it map how does it match that? <laughs> that that is a good question because it it's uh, and Laurel can talk more about that because she records and right and yeah. so yeah, some of the characters are a challenge, like uh, so his name is Bwahaha. And he basically his body is a head. And so when Jose is moving for him, he needs to be careful to not move on his neck. He has to pivot his whole body or else the arms will go through the front of the face. Oh, I see. So basically the, uh, your, both your head and your torso become the head right. of this avocado creature. Okay. That's exactly. right. That's right. And then in post, if he forgets, uh, I can do some fixing. But if he forgets a lot, we just re-record because right. at some point the post is too much. And and the drone, for example, is just a head with an invisible body. In fact, the hand is also just a hand, just a hand, but with, with a full body. body skeleton that's invisible. You know, that's that's set as transparent. And the oh, hearts are heads. <laughs> yeah, and the hearts are heads. Yes. So, uh, and what, what else you mentioned, uh, off camera, I think you mentioned something called the unreal engine, right? What, so what is that and how to use it? Okay. Unreal engine is actually a gaming engine that was created by Epic. Um, a lot of games use it. There are two, uh, basic engines, uh, or, or, well, there, there are more than two, but two that are, uh, more well known, uh, which is unreal engine and unity. Um, Unreal Engine uh, was the one that we chose, and it runs on uh, multiple OSs. Uh, so, and one of them is uh, the Oculus or Meta Quest mm -hmm. uh, headsets. Run, you know, some version of Android, and Unreal Engine runs on that. So, it's what allows us to create our movie files that people will then run to watch. Kind of like you were saying, similar to a game, um, except we don't have a gaming aspect to our movies. We we are we meant for them to be uh, watchable things, not things that you score points and stuff like that. Right. So, but but we use a gaming engine in order to 
play our animation and do simple things like collisions and, and trigger things to happen at certain times, uh, some of the physics involved. And, uh, you know, even though we are not a game, you can walk around uh, and watch the movie from any angle, any side story. Plus, you can pick up some objects and examine them closer. So if somebody's talking about a pizza box, for example, because he has some writing on it, uh, as a watcher of the movie, you can actually reach in and grab the pizza box and, and move it around and look at it. Hmm. Uh, you can take a lantern with you and, you know, if you need more light at a specific spot and, and you know, uh, look at different clues and things like that. So what what's the what creates the environment? Are you I assume that the the room you're in or the uh, neighborhood you're in is also virtual, right? It's not. Yes. Yeah, everything has to be virtual. So what's, the virtual. What, what do you do to just create that? That's Unreal Engine. So we well, uh, the the props, the assets are done in uh, not Maya. What is a. Uh, uh, huh? In Blender. Blender, right. So we have an artist that works with us uh, and her job is to create a lot of 3D assets. So she does all the, uh, the backgrounds, the, uh, you know, we have uh, one of the things, it's a huge house uh, that we've built. She's now working on a diner that we're going to use there. So we, in order to maximize her time, we buy something. So like the, well, we bought a graveyard set and then mm -hmm she built some specific assets for that and then we bought a forest set and that's where she built the house is in the forest set and and you can build those in blender like she does or maya so those are some of the tools and then you bring the assets into unreal engine and there you can like tweak uh collisions if you need to uh we depend a lot on collisions because the way that vr works is like in order to, for the viewer to navigate to another area it has to be uh, a solid ground. They, they can't just pass through a wall. They have to open a door and walk through the door. If you don't set up collisions, you can pass through a wall. But if you want them to have to open a door in order, you know, that's part of the story, then you want to set up all your collisions. But you need the things. floor to be solid for them to move across it. To be able to navigate through oh, it. Uh, so the in, Unreal Engine provides gravity, which would sink them through the floor if it worked a solid exactly and, uh, like, but also but also allows them to jump and then land in a realistic manner right uh and uh, in our uh thing for example there's uh you can get on the roof of the house if you want to and view the movie from there or, or investigate you know <laughs> different things like that i think you can even climb some of the trees and and uh, see what's going on there we have an owl character so if you want to see What's happening with the owl? You can even go up a tree and <laughs> or the drone <laughs> or the drone. Yeah, who wow. tends to get into trouble? <laughs> what, what is this movie that you've are, is you're creating it or you have created? What's your current project? Both. <laughs> Both. Uh, what uh, what we're doing is uh, we felt like we wanted to create a demo first that we can show people, um, maybe even potential investors later, and say, this is you know what we're trying to accomplish. So that's what we've been working on. And as part of the demo, we have a five minute story, um, mm. which with multiple angles, multiple side stories that you can view. Um, and so we're, that's what we're, we call it the demo right now, but it's basically a scene uh, that happens in a graveyard with all of our characters. Our characters are uh they call them cryptids or uh, monsters they're like monsters that like making movies so that's that's what <laughs> our uh, stories are based on that they are uh you know it's a town where they like to film low budget horror films uh because <laughs> they're monsters and that's what they're sadly they're not very good actors <laughs> so their <laughs> movies never do very well and laurel and i are both characters in uh our movie and we play the directors of these films oh you, so, you play yourselves you not only yeah. play, so we play you ourselves play in the, there uh, guacahaha or whatever but you know, Guaha. so. Guaha <laughs> actually uh owns a food truck with his uh with his dad well, he's a kid but yeah 
Right. Uh, but he, he's uh, actually the food services uh, in, in the set okay. with uh, <laughs> the mummy uh, who, who runs the uh, Dark Alley Diner. And they have a food truck that parks on the set. So, uh, yeah, but so that's, that's what the story is about. And, and we're, uh, we feel we're very close to finishing our demo. So, and, uh, and so the part that's already written is all these people make movies. And one of the things that we're going to have is a continuing series where they're making the story of the hand. Uh, Mm. so we already have that you know, as a comic book. And we have a couple little shots of that as live action clips. Right. I've seen we want to do action. like, I haven't seen the comic book yet. Oh, okay. Yeah. We'll have to get you a, a copy. Yeah. Oh, please. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's basically going to be where the story is. There's two stories happening, the actual story that they're filming. And then what happens behind the scenes on the set, because they're all uh, actors. So uh, so like the hand is actually an actor as well. Yeah, yeah the oh, hand is yeah. an actor. There's two other human actors. There's two human directors. The hearts are, it's based on their life story. So uh, they are creative consultants. <laughs> and then there's the food truck with the mummy and the bacon wrapped avocado. Are, is, is any of this available online today? Some clips, we though. have some clips. Uh, we have a YouTube channel that we started. Uh, so I, I, in YouTube, you can search bacon wrapped avocado. And, and after you see a lot of food uh, related <laughs> websites, you, well, you, you can, can go to our website. And oh, yeah. There. Or you can go to our website, bacon wrapped avocado.com. I'm doing that right and now. Bacon wrapped. Uh, how do you spell avocado? A V O O C A D O. Yep. All right. Probably the most misspelled word in my vocabulary. Uh, here I am. So, sh- uh, shorts, shorts newscast team BTS. What's BTS? Behind the scenes. Uh, behind the scenes and contact. Shorts is probably what I want. Yeah. And there's the hand of Flopsville animated series, which your monsters are creating. Yeah. That's right. And uh, there's the heart to the two hearts. And then, boah, ha, ha. Oh, I thought it was guaha, like guacamole. It's a uh, bacon wrapped avocado. <laughs> so ah, I see guaha. Yeah. And there's some humans here Marvin and Mara, Mum, and Jose and Laurel. <laughs> and uh, there you can also see some of the uh, uh, videos that we record about us actually recording and performing our characters right down at the bottom behind the scenes that's what the behind the scenes oh, behind the uh, scenes i see okay when will the demo the completed demo be out well that's uh we keep saying soon uh but hopefully uh by march i think it's safe to yeah. say that we'll okay. have it uh, it's we'll worth pointing it out that this is january 15th when we're recording this that's right 2024 of 2024 and it's it's 30 below zero in Chicago. With the wind oh shot. my gosh. Yeah. It's really <laughs> cold over here as well. Uh, we're in Michigan and it's minus with the wind chill is minus so. 25. Yeah. It's, it's, oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yesterday I did a search for what is the, uh, the state, the warmest state with the fewest, uh, climate, uh, issues. Are you planning <laughs> re- planning your retirement? Yeah. <laughs> no, just, just survival. You know, I, I'm sad. We we are been lucky that we haven't lost power, but I just can't uh, even imagine with this cold if you lose, you know, power and a lot oh, of people. Oh, you'd have, have to lost go to power. a hotel. You wouldn't survive long with. The yeah, region. no. Uh, um, all right. And then, uh, so so we talked about a lot of technologies here. I want to uh, leave people with just where where did you learn all this? I know you've been doing it for years, but where let's say somebody watched this video said, "Well, I'd love to get into virtual reality and develop my own thing." You know, what, where's a place to ramp up to get started? Right. Uh, well, you know, a lot of it uh, has been uh, watching YouTube videos, honestly, and, mm-hmm. and just uh, work, you know, playing with the uh, different technology. Now, Unreal Engine is a free download. So you can, uh, you can download that. And, uh, you know, as you, Dave, as you know, my background is programming and and your background is programming as well. And um, the nice thing about Unreal Engine is that it doesn't require uh, 
at at the uh, at one level it doesn't require you to know programming per se because right. it uses a blueprint system in order to develop the the what it's the code and the logic of of your game and of of your movie and stuff like that so they have a lot of tools that don't require you to know any low level type uh, programming language and uh and then there's the unreal asset store uh on re unreal marketplace mm -hmm which they also have a lot of free assets that you can download and, and play around with. If you want to get specifically into VR, uh, they also make it easy because there's a template that uh, lets you create a VR world. Um, actually, that's one of the reasons we went with Unreal Engine is that uh, right at the beginning, it seemed like Unity uh, required a lot more, uh, you know, uh, setup in order to get it going in the mm -hmm. VR headset than Unreal Engine. Unreal Engine made it so easy to create a new project that was a VR project and then build it, you know, right away or, or hit the play button and it would transfer it to the headset and you could, you know, navigate around and, and do all those things. So now, to be fair, once we got to a certain point, uh, one of the the second person we hired after our artist was a uh, a young man who had just graduated with a degree in uh, gaming. Right. So right. he had studied and, and used Unreal Engine, so he knew the ins and outs and where to find things, because eventually you can figure it all out probably. Uh, so you learned YouTube. a lot from him. Yes, yes, yes uh, we do. And uh, what we, you know, we, we like to focus, Laurel and I, on just the performance and the animation. So the other two team members focus on the assets. You know, we have the artist who does all the 3D assets and, that we need. And then we have our programmer who focuses on creating the blueprints in order to get all of the gaming logic uh, for our movie. So between the four of us, uh, we can do a we can do a lot. <laughs> Very and cool. Then we there... Just oh, our fifth person. We just hired in someone to help out with some of the social media. Right. Mm -hmm. We just hired another person to do our our media uh, stuff. So uh, what uh, what's funding this? Is this uh, your pocket now until you get investors or what's? Yeah. Okay. Right. Just, right. Good just luck ourselves. Finding an, finding an just, angel. <laughs> just just ourselves for now. Uh, we, we're soon going to be selling t-shirts also. <laughs> awesome. Well, I, you have cool t-shirts there and I have your old t-shirt I'm wearing right oh, now. Oh yes. Yes. The, uh, when you used to call yourselves, I film flops. We used to be, <laughs> I film flops. Uh, funny this was a story. Gift, gift from my friend Jose, uh, like 10 years ago. <laughs> that's, that's right. Um, and, and then we were like, well, people don't really know what I film flops is, uh, you know, but what are what are a couple of things that people know and, or like? And we said, well, they like they like bacon. They like everybody bacon. likes bacon. Nature's perfect food <laughs> and avocados. <laughs> so, not everybody. Okay. Avocados are not universally liked. But uh, no, but normally if you don't <laughs> like bacon, you might be in the avocado <laughs> camp. You know, <laughs> I see. There's so, a correlation there. Yeah. Well, awesome. Well, I wish you the best of luck, and I I, I appreciate you coming on here and teaching me a thing or two, and hopefully the viewers learn something also. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Nice, uh, nice, nice being here. Thank you very much for listening to this great podcast about technology. And friends. Great. And thank you, Dave, for having us on the show. This is the best show ever made. It was really great being here. Also nice being inside when it's cold.